Hi, we're here with Gary Adcock at the Band Pro Open House 2015. Gary, thanks again for sitting on the couch and thanks, talking with us. Thanks for having me. You know, yeah. it's always a fun. We've done this a couple of times yeah. now, and, and it's always fun to, to share things with all the viewers and the readers. So yeah. it's, you know, it's what we like to do. It's yeah. where we start from. So tell me, here we are at the end of the year. How was 2015? What happened? What are you working on? You know, 2015 has been an interesting year for a lot of people. I mean, it's this whole breakout of 4K, and, and there's been a lot of transition in the industry. There's a lot of discomfort because of 4K. We heard this push for 4K at CES, and then we talked about it in NAB, and now there's this push back, we're talking about, oh, we're going to talk about high dynamic range and not more pixels. So it's been a real interesting year because it's a point of upheaval. Different than it was when we went through the HD process. Because remember, when we did through the HD, it was painful for everybody, and now that's so near in the future, in the past, that they're still afraid of that. They're still afraid of that same issue when it comes to transitioning to 4K. And, and that's been probably the biggest disruption in the industry this year. I think it's been very interesting for people to, to decide, are we going to do this? I mean, take Netflix, for example. They said to their viewers, we have to have, we're going to shoot 4K and it's going to be 4096. Well, they eliminated a whole number of cameras that shoot UHD because they're not 4096. So you get into this issue of what's 4K and what's not and the broadcast spec and that, and it's, it's caused some concern for people. So some people have gone overabundance in the, in the statistics, and then you have other companies that are just saying, no, we're going to stick with what we've got because we think it works. Mm. And then you look at the, the, the current uh, Alexa Minis that are de delivering ProRes at, 4, 4, you know, at 4K, UHD, and it's interesting to see how the look of that is. And, that. and, and then we have this whole secondary industry because Canon at Canon Expo just before IBC they dropped 8K on us in a manner that many of us had never seen. Four Odyssey Q7 recorders recording a signal from a single camera. All of a sudden, data becomes a whole different nightmare for us. So you are an expert in this arena 4K. You've been doing this for... Uh, I, I, I never call myself an expert. I've just, <laughs> exper I'm just, I've just failed a lot. <laughs> that's, that's how you get there, right? That's how you learn. Looking at 2016, it's great to get the Gary Adcock you know, crystal ball. What's oh. coming? Well, Thunderbolt 3 is here. For those people who have been starting to work on Thunderbolt, they're changing the connector and doing more than they've ever done. Some of the prototypes I'm currently running, I can't say from who, but I'm seeing over two gigabytes a second on a laptop. Mm. And with the ability to externally connect to a GPU via a single cable and power that, we're seeing a, a, a quantum change because it's not going to make our systems bigger to be able to do 8K, it's going to make our systems smaller. Mm. And we're going to get to the point where portability comes back in the field. We can carry a laptop and do a little bit of work on it, do the basic work, and then get back and do the data transfers, the high end, the color finishing. I mean, think about it. If you're doing 2.2 gigabytes a second on a laptop, you can actually do an ASUS color output from a laptop on location. Full 16-bit open EXR files without an issue. That kind of changes everything. Because now we're talking about now it's not just raw or anything else. Is We can actually build an ASUS workflow on set in real time. And that changes everything. Let me ask, the role of the DIT, is that more critical uh, than ever? Because it's just from what you just talked it's, about. It's interesting. Um, there's a lot of controversy on DIT. There really is. And I, I, I kind of gotten to the point where it's getting to the point where you have somebody like uh, Bobby Marvuda or somebody like that who's an on-set colorist mm -hmm. who's also a DIT and handling some of the DIT functions. And then you're going to have data handlers. You're not seeing a lot of guys that are doing live color on set as much in that environment because they don't have the equipment to maintain the signal bandwidth. In 1080, it's easy, it's a single pipe. We start talking about 4K, the possibility of having to multi-patch devices, how do we do a color correction through an HDMI conversion, how do we deal with HDCP on HDMI to be able to do single cable connectivity for 4K, we have a lot of problems involved in that. So the DIT position, I think, is, is smart people are going to work together with their data people, the guys like me, build a workflow shoot and then go back and implement that workflow in post. And I think what's going to happen is, is that there's going to be a lot of movement um, away from doing onset color and doing pre-prescribed color or using the ASUS workflow that allows you to pull the base color model for any camera that's been identified by the Academy. And then you can build your color correction off that and it's actually much faster and simpler to use. 
not for everybody. I mean, still strictly for the high induced workflows, for episodic television, for feature films, for you know, commercials. End users are going to have the ability through uh, devices like the Teradek Color mm -hmm. to be able to do remote onset LUT monitoring. Mm -hmm. Things like that are going to really change the way people look at things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not just that, it's, you know, the light yeah. panels, asterisks that are more light in the booth, they're smaller and lighter than, light, than the old light panels that we're used to. I mean, they weigh half as much right? with the same light put, the same consistency and all of that. And those kind of things are, are what the fringe of all of this is because it's not just the set and the production tools that are getting smaller, it's the cameras and the lights and everything else. Right. It's following the same path our cameras have. It's following the same paths our lighting has. Mm -hmm. same, following the same paths our phones have. Right. You know, they got big, they got small, they got big, they got small, <laughs> now they're kind of big again. But, <laughs> but those are the kind of things that I see as somebody who who's able to understand the front end of the technology. So let's hear a little bit about what you're going to be working on in 2016. One of the first jobs I get to do in 2016 is a VR job for NFL films um, through my friend Lucas Wilson and his company, and the company works with Jaunt VR. Lucas has been producing content for the NFL films and they decided to go into VR and virtual reality. So we're working together to bring a team and a couple of together in a couple of NFL cities to do mm. that. And one of the first one is January 3rd in Chicago for the Bears-Lions game. Oh, wow. So on the field with VR cameras, I helped him find a crew in Chicago, a bunch of people I work with on a regular basis who've worked with me. And, uh, and it looks like one of those, okay, I'm going to really have a good time at this gig. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else that excites you, you know, new technologies or, or anything going on as a sort of a closer here? Accessories, cameras, God, it's so hard right now <laughs> because there's so much out there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of funny because I still go back to the basics. I'm a still I'm a guy that likes sticks. You know, I still use a tripod. I, I preach about working on tripods and and how to light things and and you know how do you get power? You know, there's all the things that people forget about. It's not just a camera and a lens. It's this plethora of stuff that we put around the camera. And I think there's a lot of focus that's going to come on that for the next couple of years because people understand as these cameras get smaller and smaller. I mean, we look at what the guys at Zacuto have done. Look at what Red Rock Micro has done. Look at some of the people that have built accessories in this industry for the smaller and smaller cameras and how well they've done because of it. I think it's a huge burgeoning market. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of space in that for more people. Where, where can our community find you online, whether it's Facebook, if you do Twitter, uh, if you have a website, et cetera? Uh, the website is GaryAdcock.com. Uh, the Twitter feed is at GaryAdcock, one word. I make it really simple because that's that. Well, listen, we really appreciate Gary sitting down, going into the technology once again, and uh, look forward to talking again at NAB and this time next year. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.